All right, we got to talk about episode three. I guess we have to talk about it. Who killed WCW? Who did kill it? I mean, there were several people that killed it. Yeah. I know they're trying to protect one of them with this series, I can see. That I think more than one. Off. Well, they definitely tried to protect Vince Russo, don't you think? Well, uh, eh, I mean, he was he was stupid enough that he, he dug his own grave. But I mean, to, to, to a, to a I degree. did I did laugh uproariously when he's talking about uh, the David Arquette deal, and he goes, you know, we went in and I I called the guys and you know I told him I had this idea. What if David or, or actually Shivani says had the idea, which I think Shivani is confirmed. But oh yeah, yeah, that's regardless. The, story. It was the, the point idea. is he he calls everybody and he goes, you know, I told him how about uh, how about David Arquette, you know, wins a title, and he goes, bro, they were all up for it, and then they immediately go to everybody else in the match and they're all like. This was a stupid idea. We didn't want to do it. We like DDP is like we're not doing this. Absolutely not. Well, he they weren't in the they weren't in the booking meeting. So I, I don't know, but, know what. Oh, he's I don't, say he's claiming the people in the booking meeting. The people in the he book, was claiming the, book, the people involved. Yeah, no, in the booking meeting, he said that they were all up for it. Where um, and uh, it didn't sound like anybody was up for it. Eric Bischoff said that he didn't think it was a bad idea, yeah. which I which which stunned me. And I guess and, and and they both said that you know they didn't think it was a bad idea. Russo in hindsight. said he'd do it again. I mean, Eric Bischoff said he supported it. I mean, that's the thing. See, that was the thing when those guys said that, where it's just like, I mean, to me that was like, I mean, there's a lot I've said about this about having no regard for the fans and all that, you know, which which the. Um, the one when they did the thing on the show that I was on, on, on the Bash at the Beach, where, where when I watched all of those guys and it was just like, these guys were all about their own egos and they had no concern with the fans who were the paying customers with the bullshit that they pulled. Now, on this one, the key to me watching this is, you know how like, you know, we talk about like, you know, you watch wrestling and you look at whether it's ratings or you look at fan reaction or attendance or whatever. And you see kind of like when it goes up and down and you try to learn like what's the dumb shit stuff that, that hurt it and what's the smart stuff that got it up, right? So you got these two guys. And this is the thing about wrestling that's to me like a lot of guys that work in wrestling do pay attention to wrestling, okay? And the ups and downs and things like that. Here we are. Um, when David Arquette won the title, you know, they're talking like, like Russo was going, we were on the front page of USA Today, which – it's not exactly true, but they were on the front of the entertainment page of USA Today, which is good, right? Okay, it's good that you get you're looking for that publicity. But why do you what what is the what is the reason for getting publicity? The reason for getting publicity is to get more people to watch your show, to build up your your ratings, to build up your live gates, to build up your pay per view, to sell merchandise. Just publicity for the sake of publicity, or getting people to talk when they say. This is fucking dumb, and it hurts your business. You know that's not good publicity. So anyway, they, they they did have that, and then the next week on Nitro, the gap between WWF between uh, Raw and Nitro was the biggest that it had ever been by far. I forgot the exact numbers. I'm thinking it was, you know, again, I didn't look this up, but I think it was like seven point four to two point seven. So they they didn't quite triple. Uh, um, Raw didn't quite triple, but this was at a time when, you know, they'd never had a gap like that in history. So that was that was the result of making David Arquette world champion. Plus, they did a, the pay per view, which absolutely bombed. I remember that. So here's the thing. Okay, so your popularity goes down, your pay per view goes down. I mean, the house shows were down anyway by this point, so I can't say that this hurt house shows. Didn't help them, but the point of all this is that. The thing did not work in any way, shape, or form. And these guys, here they are 20 years later, and I don't think that either of them even knew that. And that's and, and supposedly, isn't that their job to be monitoring this stuff, to, you know, figure this out? And I think that that, more than anything, you know, kind of like told me, it's like, you know, they're not even, they're not, I mean, no, did they have any regard for the fans, either of them? Of course not. Okay, they just had something they regarded, you know, they talk about their egos, but they're also they don't even monitor their own business. That's why the business went down, because they're sitting there. Oh, our ideas are so great. Business is going down. Oh, but our ideas are so great. You know, it's like, why is business going down? You know, it's like when, you know, it's it's the same thing I could say with AEW, but AEW never did anything like one one hundredth as stupid as that. But that was just. 
you know, there you go. Um, yeah, they they spent the entire time talking about, you know, anyway, the thing about the show was if you watched it and you didn't really follow the death of WCW, it's like this show, I, I can't even imagine a normal person watching this show and have any idea what anybody was talking about. Well, but, the thing is, is, all those clips that they showed, like, they were horrible. They, you know, that well, was exactly. horrible. Whenever people talk about like, but this my but my point I wanted to make was they didn't talk at all, either of them, about any declines in business whatsoever. They never talked about business. All they did, the uh, best we got from anybody was Russo claimed, you know, I, you know, when I showed up for the first three months, you know, I I brought the ratings up, and and he actually this time, I mean, sorted to his credit because he was still wrong, but he goes barely, but they were up. He no, admitted the one who he said, barely moved them. No, 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 no. The one who said barely was Brad Siegel. No. Russo did. No, Russo did too. Oh, oh he did? That's no. why I was stunned. Yeah. Because he goes, he goes, I brought him up. It, just a little bit, but I brought him up. And I yeah. was like, wow, he actually, you know. But he, but he didn't bring him up. No. No, it was a it was a it was a but see that but it was the, a the, gimmick that. based on cutting the time of uh of nitro from well, three well, hours well, to well, two. Well, well, that and, and and a couple other things. I mean, the number that that was for the very last week he was on because they cut and they cut one of the lower rated hours out, so it did go up that week. But the, what happened with with the thing was the ratings were at a for that point in time not a particularly good level, and then um, they made the announcement of uh, that that. They had signed Russo, and they made a big deal about it. You know, it was I remember Jim Barnett, or yeah, Jim Barnett calling me up and goes, like, this is you know the week it happened, and he and he's Jim Barnett read like would read the New York Times front to back. You know, that was like his thing. You know, because he's an old school guy, and he called me up and he just goes like, they had a wrestling story in the New York Times about Vince Russo, and he's like laughing about it. This guy who turned around the WWF, and he's just laughing and just going like. He didn't do shit. That was Vince McMahon, you know, and Steve Austin. He goes, this guy, they think that this guy did this. And, of course, the guy was coming in. And um, But anyway, so he comes in. So the week before he comes in, everyone knows it's a lame duck show. And they did, I believe it was a 2.6 rating. You could look it up. I'm not exactly positive. But that was an, an artificially low number. They were yes. averaging well over that. Russo's first week, tons of publicity. And they do a 3.4 the first week. And, and you know, but then... From that 3.4, I don't think they ever hit 3.4 again. They were down, down, down. I mean, not. it wasn't down bad. It's not like that every month was down from the month before. It wasn't like it nosedived. It it was kind of steady-ish down. Not, you know, I mean, the ratings were not. The ratings did not fall off a cliff at this point. But the pay-per-view, if you, and you remember, you wrote the book. That last pay-per-view he did, I mean, it, like, freaking bombed. And that's when they replaced him. Was 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 actually right before the pay per view or, or right after? I forget which. But but and the house show business, you know, house show business wasn't going up. And he did that horrible tournament, you know. And he was saying like that when when he came in, everybody was out to get him. And it is possible that that Hulk Hogan, you know, with Hulk Hogan's ego and everything, and this guy's coming in with this idea that he's going to run things. I could I could absolutely see that that Vince's story is right about Hogan that Hogan was out to get him or Hogan didn't want to Hogan didn't want to really cooperate with him and then Hogan certainly wanted Bischoff back. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt of that. But I mean, I remember I mean, I talked to everybody there, you know, during that period. And when Russo came in, it was not it was not he was not viewed negatively at all. I mean, you know, um Brad Siegel was in there thinking that, like, they had signed the guy who had turned WWF around and, and you know, this genius writer. And, you know, boy, did, boy, did he learn. But but the thing was, is um, the first I heard anything negative about Russo was, um, you know, I would say um, six, seven weeks in. It was when they did that tournament for the world title. And you remember the tournament. I think every every finish was like a fuck finish, right? And they had Medusa in the tournament for the men's world title. And, and the whole tournament, like, with all the great talent WCW had, and they did have excellent talent at the time, um, it's like this tournament freaking sucked. It was horrible. And, yeah, it was terrible. Um, and even and either they had Bret Hart and Chris Benoit in the final. You think that couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't ruin that. And they did by having that... Uh, 
NWO thing where they all came out in the middle and the in, in the middle of the match and everybody lost focus on the match and they couldn't even get it back. So it's like they couldn't even put on a Bret Hart Chris Benoit match in Toronto, not not in like Cedar Rapids, Iowa, in Toronto, a Bret Hart Chris Benoit match, and they fucked that. They even they even fucked that up. So anyway, at that point when that tournament was over, I absolutely did start getting people going to me and going like Dave. I mean. This may have been a mistake, don't you think? And I go, yeah, it's not looking good. This tournament was not um, a good thing. And that was the first I heard about it. So it was not like day one. It was about, you know, he had enough, you know, he had to earn, he had to earn his disdain. He did not come in with that disdain. It was not like day one, everybody hated him. They did end up doing that. And then the other one that I did want to bring up also, that you, it's like, it's like the idea that, out of loyalty to Vince Russo, Benoit and those guys all quit and went to WWF. And again, like I talked to some of those guys, including Benoit, during that period, and you may have as well. And um, and I also talked to somebody who was very, very close to Benoit, um, you know, all the time. Um, and, and during that week, and I talked to Conan, who was actually, um, you know, one of the key guys. Um, it was originally the rat the, the guys that were going to leave were Benoit Malenko Perry Saturn um, and Eddie Guerrero and Shane Douglas and Conan they were all together and then what happened was they all went to negotiate with WWF and you know WWF told me oh yeah we want all of them but in fact they did not want Conan and they did not want Shane Douglas for whatever reasons they didn't want those two guys and so you had this deal where those four guys who were supposed to be literally the other two guys, and, you know, they were friends, too. I mean, like, legitimate friends. Like, like you know, Shane Douglas thought that Dean Malenka was his friend. Eddie Guerrero and, Con and um, Conan had been friends and whatever. So they had to, like, kayfabe their friends, sign, and then kind of leave them behind. And then those guys essentially had to stay in WCW after they had pretty much quit WCW. But WCW didn't, you know, did take them back um, because they had nowhere to go. But, I mean, the whole thing during that period is is that they did not leave out of loyalty to Vince McMahon, I mean, to Vince Russo. They left because Kevin Sullivan was the booker, and they were very, you know, when Kevin Sullivan had been the booker previously, um, and, of course, Kevin Sullivan's wife ended up being um, Chris, Chris Benoit's wife. So there was, um, you know, because of Nancy, there was tremendous heat between Kevin Sullivan and Chris Benoit, even though Kevin Sullivan was the one who who actually booked his own divorce or you know, or whatever, because he's the one who wanted to do the shoot angle and fool all the boys that uh, when 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 Sullivan and, and and Chris were doing their program, that it was a real shoot and they really hated each other and they had like this confrontation that you know in front of the boys that nobody knew about, but of course the boys were going to tell us, and because of that, then it becomes real. Except we all knew that it was fake, you know. But that's what they did. But in in doing that, having Nancy around Chris all the time to pre prevent to to um, do this worked angle, Nancy and Chris ended up falling in love and end up she ends up leaving Kevin. Although her and Kevin were on the rocks at the time already, and then Nancy ends up with Chris. So by this point. You know, Chris hates Kevin, and and Kevin probably hates Chris. So Kevin booked, and I don't. Do you remember how long that losing streak was on pay per view? Didn't he lose like nine pay per views in a it row? It was many. Yeah, I think he. I think Kevin booked Chris to lose like nine pay per views in a row. Might have been seven. You could look it up. I don't remember, but it was many. It was many in a row. So Kevin, when when they were going to replace Russo as Booker, with Kevin, um, really Chris was furious. And those guys were all loyal to Chris, so they all wanted out, all the guys that I mentioned. And so Kevin, trying to, um, you know, pacify the situation and knowing that, you know, these guys are great wrestlers, he, as Booker, decides to put the world title on Chris. And so they make Chris the world champion. Chris didn't, you know, this guy who his whole life wanted to be world champion and everything, he did not give a shit. He thought it was a bullshit thing. He was just like, I'm not falling for this. So they so they, they still give him the world title. Then he quits the next day, and Bill Bush, who's running it, goes, oh, yeah, let's give him his release. Let's give all these guys their release. They're not happy, you know, and, you know, it cut the heart out of, you know, what, you know, the, 
the un, you know the mid card because those guys were all great. And one of the things that I guess was not that they didn't bring up was that when all this was going down, Mike Graham, who was friends with Kevin from way way back, Mike Graham pulled a knife. Did which do you remember? Do you remember which guy Mike Graham pulled the knife on? I don't remember this. Yeah, Mike Graham pulled the knife on somebody. One of one of the four. I, I it might have been Malenko, but I'm not sure. But he pulled a knife on one of them. So because they complained to HR with that, it was like okay, they gave those guys their release over that, and so they got their release. They went, and now Eric showing how much he paid attention because this story was out for what two weeks before those guys showed up in Dallas. You know, on the on the on the Raw show, and Eric is telling. I'm watching TV, you know, with my wife, and I'm watching Raw, and all of a sudden I see, you know, Chris and Eddie and these guys on. And it's like, Eric is basically exposing, he paid no attention to wrestling because everyone in wrestling knew this for weeks that this was happening. Nobody was surprised when they showed up except for, I mean, I'm sure like rank and file wrestling fans were, but nobody on the inside was. Another thing that they said, which was, um, who was the guy on the show? Was it um, it was Booker, I think, who you know who said that uh, when they showed up on that last show at Club La Vila that nobody knew what was going on. Yes, that that you know until, you know it was just business as usual when we got to the building and then we find out that like the company's been sold. It's like how many weeks did we talk about that company being sold every day? We, we, you know, I, that I, is, I, that is true. But I do remember the day of the show. There were people other than Booker who were like the same. Like they oh, just, no, no. they just didn't believe it at all. No, 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 no. But the thing is, is everyone knew the story, but they thought because they had been worked so many times by Eric, sure. with these fake angles, that Eric was working another fake angle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, I absolutely remember that, and I'm going like, no, this is not a fake angle. I go like, the it's it's been covered in all you know, it's covered in like you know, not just us. It was like, you know, major trade publications and newspapers and everything covered this. It's like Vince McMahon bought the frickin' company and he's taken over on that show. And it's like, oh, no, Eric's just working. This, this, there's, there's no way. You know, the company's never shutting down or anything like that. And it's like, no, it's over. This is the last show. And they didn't, But they didn't actually tell anyone. They, um, they sent the memo to the office people that, um, what was the memo? We were, um, we're going on a... Um, like a temporary vacation or something. Temporary like they, hiatus. Temporary hiatus, yeah, yeah. So they like lied to their employees right down to the last week. But um, the other one that was interesting, and, and I actually, and I, I believe that Booker did not know the night he was going to win the title ahead of time. But, I mean, I just remember the night before, I mean, I was on a show with uh, Live Audio Wrestling with Jeff Merrick, and we were talking about, yeah, Jeff Jarrett. And Ho I mean, everything that happened, we had talked about on the show the night before. Um, so it's like this was not like a secret, you know, or anything like that. But I guess some of the guys didn't know or whatever. But um, yeah, I think that the thing that that um, the show, like, this was a, a hard one to watch because, like, the other ones, um, I would say, like, oh, they needed fact checking and all this. But this was way beyond that. I mean, like, all of the stuff, like, all the stuff that we've said, it's been said like a hundred times. It's not like you have to look stuff up. I mean, everything about the bullshit has been out there, and they just let the bullshit go, you know? And and um, I just thought, like, you know, at, at some point, you know, in, instead of catering to these guys that are pathological liars, they should go, okay, this is what they said. Now have somebody. That's why I was mad you weren't on the show. Just have somebody, you know, you wrote a freaking book on the subject. I mean, I could have been on too, but you wrote the book on the subject, and it's like... You know, I'm just watching this going like, you know, yeah, these guys have been saying this this stuff for, in some cases, for years and years and years, but none of it's true the way that they said it, and it's out there, and the, the actual story is out there, printed, some of this has been in newspapers and things like that, and yet they just kind of let it go, so um, I was I was pretty disappointed in, the, in, in episode three. I thought Conan did a good job. Conan was. Good. He's actually been great on all of these shows. Yeah, Conan. Conan was good because even though Conan and Vince Russo and 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 are friends, and I don't know what Conan's relationship was, is with Bishop, but I know that Conan and Vince Russo are friends. He did, you know, bury Vince Russo's bad ideas like the Arquette thing and and some of the other ones, you know. And Vince, you know, and Booker, you know, I think Russo thought that Booker was going to be all 
you know, I I gave Booker the first world title, and um, I mean he he did and he didn't. There was a lot of pressure to to make Booker world champion because of the lawsuit that was going on at the time. I think that they felt that they needed a black world champion, so that was going on too. But you know, again, it was Vince Russo was the Booker on that night, and he did make Booker world champion. And those freaking clips of Right. Those clips of Vince Russo wearing the the football outfit, yes. trying to take bumps and everything, and talk. You know when he goes, "I was a better performer than eighty percent of the guys on the roster." Yes. And it's like, oh my god, you know, it's like you look at him and you go, "Like, what is this guy doing?" It's like if when you watch some of those clips, like with the Judy Bagwell on a pole and everything, and it's like. This stuff was like, I mean, I remember it being horrible, but if you're like a someone who watches wrestling and you watch those clips, you're going, what the hell were those people doing? I mean, it was like, this was way, way, way beyond, this was way beyond bad booking. I mean, and, and you know, but you know, on the whole thing, like these guys are talking about this and they're not talking about, hey, business nosedived. You know, business nosedived and the company started losing tons of money, which is probably like the key to the whole story is that business nosedived and, and they lost all that money. And it's just like, they're going to go in there and just go, oh, some corporate guy didn't like wrestling. And it's like, you know, that's kind of like ignoring, you know, like the entire story, basically. It's ignoring the entire story and protecting two of the people most responsible for the thing going under. And why? And why? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I don't know why. I think that because there's a narrative of trying to blame, like, you know, blame the non-wrestling people, the bad, the bad people who didn't want this. You know, and Siegel was played into it because Siegel was just like he was running it. And he just goes, you know, of all the things I was running, I didn't like it, you know. But, you know, again, they showed the clip of him on the last week's show, like bragging about how great it was when they were doing great business. But when it was going down, of course, you're not going to like it. Aside, you know. You had a, a show that was a, a big television hit, and in one season it freaking nosedived because of absolutely horrible creative. Yeah, you're going to like, you know, and it's losing the company lots and lots of money, and you're overseeing it. Of course you're going to try to figure out a way to get rid of it at that point because it's like it's, it's killing, you know, it's making you look really, really bad because you're overseeing this nosediving company. So, of course, at this point, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're going to be negative on it, you know, because you're not the one. I mean, I guess he's the one technically in charge, but he wasn't the one doing the booking, but he was the one who got snowed by Russo, you know. And and I don't blame him for that because I thought that, you know, Vince Russo, I mean, he did. He, he was the head writer of WWF when the company started turning business around and, and turned business around and was doing fantastic, you know, the best that they ever did. Now, they did do better business after he left, but the fact is is that, you know, in, you know, 97, they, they set the wheels in motion. In 98, they really took off. 99, they were on fire, and then Russo left, and they got bigger and bigger until, you know, 2001, I think, was the biggest year. He left in 99, so it was like they did get bigger after he left, but... You know, he was in charge at in 1999 when the guy who is the head writer of WWF, um, who's now killing you after you had been beating them, and he calls you up and just goes, "I want to, I want to come in and be writer." You're going to jump at that. So, so at that point, like I don't blame them at all for making the move, and you know, Russo talked a good game. And, I mean, the thing is, is when he came in, there was great, great hype and great hope that he would turn things around. And then he got there, and it was just like he was writing for Vince Russo, you know, like the Oklahoma character and things like that. You know, he was writing to get back at his enemies. He was writing for his ego. He was not writing for the fans. He was disconnected from the fans. And, you know, he didn't have Vince, Vince McMahon to rein him in or anyone. And then when they brought him in with Eric, you know, Eric obviously didn't stop the the david arquette thing so you know eric wasn't the guy to rein him in either you know when they worked together and we knew i remember when they started working together day one you and i we talked about this is never going to last this had no chance and i remember those those people at the company oh you know eric bischoff and vince russo together you know the the guy who made vince mcmahon and the guy who beat vince mcmahon remember that stupid line oh yeah and they're working together now so we're going to have a chance and it's like Aside from the fact they were so so far gone and those guys had, you know, 
DX and Steve Austin and The Rock and all this. It's like it was it was they were, you know, it was never going to happen. But those guys like um, Eric Bischoff and, and Russo were like oil and water. They had no chance. Plus, you had Hogan in the mix, you know, and um, and Bischoff's always going to be with Hogan. And Russo could never get along with Hogan because Hogan had creative control and Hogan wasn't going to do anything for anybody. And he was the top guy. So it was a formula that had no chance of it had no chance. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.